Hello guys, I'm Audio Man, and I gotta say it's good to be back after such a long break. Now I bet most of you are curious about the long overdue analysis of Gothic playable teaser. So let's talk about the new trailer for Gothic Remake. But also don't worry there's an update section in this video cause I'm still working on it. Without any further ado, let's begin. The first thing that we see in the trailer is this skeleton in a cage pecked at by a crow which sets the tone quite nicely. And then we proceed with a little sneak peek at the life in the old camp. Now this man here is out of ore, so he... throws away a perfectly good pouch. Even though, as we are explicitly told, most people in the colony hardly owe anything. I know that this seems like a minor thing, but this has strong, spoiled rich kid from a wealthy household feel to it, how he just throws away a perfectly good utility item that he actually needs, as if he could just easily get another one. This doesn't exactly scream doesn't own anything to me. Like, do the developers throw away their wallets when they're empty? But fine, lack of internal logic and shoddy world building aside, it's a minor thing, so let's move on. Off your ass. And you ain't paid your nugs yet. As you can see, for some reason, the colony is now an English colony. And since it's full of inmates, it's basically Australia. Furthermore, they swear like Australians, and we have to stop now. For those of you only vaguely familiar with the series, it might be confusing. Audio Man, you may ask. It's a prison, so doesn't it make sense that everyone in there swears like a sailor? Well, dear viewer, the answer might surprise you. You see, the original Gothic, at least in the English and Polish versions, avoided harsh swears, but here we immediately open with an F-bomb and there will be more later on. Admittedly, my German is not amazing, so I can't speak for that version. But not having the game drop random swears in the most juvenile way possible, the way games usually do it nowadays. Otherwise, it's all my fault. Fuck that. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Actually, help distinguish Gothic a little bit, especially amongst games such as The Witcher, which actually took inspiration from it, but implemented the profanity-heavy language from the books. I don't want to rag too much on this point since, for all I know, the original German version is just one big never-ending string of profanities, but this still feels inelegant and childish. As for those claiming that prisoners everywhere swear like sailors every two seconds in an uncontrollable and obsessive manner, I beg to differ as this is very much a picture painted by popular media. My second counterpoint would be that the king sends everyone, regardless of the severity of their crime, behind a barrier, including people who can't pay their taxes, rendering this point null even further. The original Gothic achieved its atmosphere of imprisonment by using destitution, danger and hopelessness. People in the colony live in squalor, they are threatened by both the unassailable fauna and the more aggressive and deceitful inmates, and they have no hope of getting out. That is what created the sensation of imprisonment in the colony, not dropping F-bombs constantly. That's not to say that the prisoners were high-class poets, as mild profanity was used to accentuate particularly volatile conversations. But here it gets quite cartoonish and silly as we see later on. And here we get a better look at the old camp. Not much has changed since the Christmas teaser except for the fact that the NPCs look much more natural. And before you ask, yes, we're going to go into the color palette later on. For now, let's follow our friend as he... ...steals an apple. From a wheelbarrow full of them. What? First of all, food was a huge scarcity in the colony, as Guy explains to us in the original. But this guy just casually has two crates full of apples. But fine, let's say it's a fresh shipment from the outside world and he's taking it out of the camp, presumably as convoy to the old mine. Stealing one of these would immediately get the guy to start a ruckus and the whole camp to aggro on you since food being such a commodity is fiercely protected. But this guy gets mildly upset and lets you go even though later on we see a guy attack another inmate for slightly bumping into him. And here we see the first glimpse of stealth. In all likelihood to indicate to new players that NPCs don't take kindly to rummaging through their households. You can't just get out of Rivia around someone's home uninvited. Here we have a scene that is... lacking. We see a guard terrorizing an inmate for ore. 
That would be fine on its own, but it has since been confirmed that this guard here is Bloodwin. His appearance is fine, and even though I can't say I'm too big on his accent, what really bothers me is the fact that since this is Bloodwin, this scene makes very little sense. Bloodwin is not the type of guy to go and beat you up himself. That was the whole point of his character. Bloodwin introduces himself to you in a fall friendly, clearly shady manner, and asks you for ore. If you agree, he'll want more every day, and if you disagree, then he'll try to make your life hell by sending others after you. This made Bloodwin a memorable, interesting and believable character. But I guess now he's a standard fantasy brute, frothing at the mouth, yelling that Gomez and I are the only reason you're still breathing, which sounds hilariously overdone. All in all, this scene really makes it seem like the developers misunderstood what made Bloodwin a threatening character to a new player. We'll revisit this later on, but for now, let's continue shadowing our thieving friend. Here we see a previously teased image, with the novice robe that looks a little bit like it's printed on a t-shirt, but other than that, no complaints with this image. Wait a minute... Oh no! Anyway, here we see Snuff and a bunch of inmates standing in line to get some food. This Snuff is far from his old jovial self, instead being cranky and rude since everyone has to be uniformly miserable in this new grimdark world we've entered. No joy allowed! We also see Matt, whose tantrum is a little bit much for my taste and he looks a bit too young for that OG creep he's supposed to be, but overall, he's not too bad. Now we go on to witness that mindless it's prison so everyone has to fight and yell all the time scene that I've mentioned earlier. Ok, so to go back a little bit, so far all we've seen are people swearing, yelling, stealing, attempting to steal and fighting. How is this place functioning exactly? How is this bunch of bozos able to prolong their existence in this harsh, technologically medieval but also much more dangerous world? And also conduct large scale mining operation? This cartoonish depiction of the old camp is a far cry from the original idea of inmates trying to organize their life in an inescapable prison, and feels very much like a stereotypical depiction of life in incarceration from an American TV show. Now I know what you might say, this is just a trailer, so it has to condense things and simplify them for presentational purposes. And while I can see that point, this still feels like way, way too much. The only praise that I can give here is that we see the guard knock down one of the inmates, presumably because he didn't pay protection money, but the other one did. At least, I hope the developers remember that detail. And this brings us to the arena. Oh, the arena. I've criticized the arena before in one of my videos as being nonsensically large and out of place, and this is no different here. It's still like a shabby version of the Roman Colosseum in comparison to that small repurposed training square that it most likely was in the original. Our character talks to a random inmate about the beds instead of Scathy, and then we see... this thing. This thing. You know, when I told people that they'll put a shadow beast in the arena, they thought that was a baseless exaggeration. And then they dropped this trailer and it turns out that the reality was even funnier. But to go back to the start, when the devs dropped the news that you would now fight animals in this blunder dome, I was incredibly disappointed. Why you may ask? Well, the answer is quite simple. The animals in the colony, if you've watched my previous video, presented an alternate and much more dangerous path of evolution than our own world. A scavenger, the basic source of food for the prisoners, basically serving as the equivalent of the real world deer, was an animal that could easily kill a new inmate. Drax makes sure to warn you about that when you ask him. It's as if the danger level posed by our fauna was raised and then further elevated by the wild and inhospitable nature of the mining valley. But now? A fire lizard, one of the most dangerous creatures in the original, is no longer a force of nature. It's a source of entertainment. A random inmate with no clothes on is able to take it on and the fire lizard is struggling to kill him. In the original, a fire lizard was so fast and deadly it killed you in a second. They turn a genuine threat into something pathetic and laughable. And this damage is one of the coolest aspects of the original world building. It also makes no sense whatsoever on a logical level, dealing another blow to the world building. 
How on earth did a bunch of inmates manage to beat this thing into submission without killing it, making the whole thing much harder, and then drag it all the way back to the camp and then store it to be released in the arena? Doing this to a shadow beast would have been a ridiculous endeavor, wasting time, men and resources. Not to even mention being unachievable on a technical level. Unless these bozos invented vehicles that run on ore because otherwise I don't see them transporting this thing from the beach near the Tower of Mist to the center of the colony. But not only that, it's absolutely bewildering that the convicts apparently decided that a little fire hazard is just what they needed for their camp. Which by the way literally burns to the ground in Gothic 2, proving that this is a legitimate threat. For crying out loud, this is the animal that Tarok referred to as the dragon in the first game. So all in all, we've exchanged a unique aspect of the original world building as well as some of the internal logic of the world for a couple generic quests where you fight animals in the arena. Wow, never seen that before. Also some of the fans try to explain it away through various headcanons and I gotta say, you can try and theorize it away all you want, it just doesn't make sense. Such as the idea that they stole a fire lizard's egg. Ah yes, because it would be an easy task to rob the nest of one of the most dangerous predators in the colony, run all the way back to the old camp unpursued, incubate it somehow and then raise it and feed it copious amounts of very scarce food for like 10 years until it is big enough to put up a fight. Yeah, that makes sense. And so the trailer ends on Bloodwind finding and assaulting this character. Good. Oh, and another thing, now that the trailer is over. If you looked closely, you may have noticed that the developers took to heart the criticism about everything being beige that was often reiterated. And I do appreciate that. Despite the harshness of some of my criticism, I want them to know that this is still made in good faith and with no ill will towards any of them. Therefore, I would simply like to state that while I'm glad that the beige tint seems to be gone, it also appears to have been replaced by grey instead. Everything in this world is grey and dull, maybe with a little tinge of brown. It gets so brown that this picture of Joel from The Last of Us I made looks pretty legit, at least according to other people in Gothic Discord server. So please, please reconsider this whole approach. I get that Gothic is not bright and vibrant, but it's not grayscale neither. These flags here, which are supposed to be vibrant red, are orange brown at most. I get that they were in the sun, but so are real world flags and I don't see any white and red flags in my city turning grey and orange. Which actually brings me to another point, what's with the scorching sun in this remake? The original Gothic had moderate climate that you can easily find in Central Europe, but in these teasers, it's always scorching sun and gust of dust at every step. The colony is inhospitable, not post-apocalyptic. And with that, I conclude my over-analysis of this trailer. As you have probably noticed, I'm not a big fan of this one and combined with the recent monster reveals, I can't say I'm not worried for the direction the game is taking. Having said that, since we do know for a fact that the devs at Alchemia do listen to feedback and adjust things in the game to take that into consideration, please don't think for a second that this is either an attack or baiting people for views. I'm simply stating what I truly believe to be the case. A lot of this stuff just isn't gothic. Please take a step back and try to look at this again. That's all I'm asking for. Also, on a bright note, I overall like the music in this video. Even if the old cam theme hardly sounds like its original rendition. The sound effects are decent as well. I appreciate how they brought back the original dying sound. And there are many minor things here that I do like. The overall look of the NPCs, I'm talking about their faces, because their clothes could use some work, with everyone wearing burlap sacks and hardly anything resembling Digger's clothes being seen. But still, this isn't hopeless or terribly made. It just needs a re-examination of the approach that the devs chose to take, because this stuff is strained further and further from what made Gothic special. Now, here's how I think this trailer could be improved. What if instead of a random guard telling this prisoner to get his ore, it's Bloodwin, making the same shady vague threat towards this guy that he makes towards the nameless hero to establish his character? Now our guy refuses since he's broke, to which Bloodwin says that the colony is a dangerous place and he'll find out about it soon enough. 
Naturally unsettled, this thief with no name keeps the pouch and tries to sneak one off of another inmate. Maybe even swap them if he's extra cheeky. Only for the convict's friend to notice and have our guy on the run. He finds a place to hide, maybe in a barrel as a little nod to the fans, and after losing his pursuers proceeds to go more or less the same route, meeting Snuff, who actually acts like Snuff, and we see the little scene with Mud. This way you get to show off that there will be pickpocketing in the game, that you'll have elements of stealth and NPCs aggroing on you when you fail. Again, you can't get out of Rivia someone's stuff in Gothic. Then our character walks past Snuff and instead of seeing a random brawler up for no reason, we see a guy who stole some food being viciously beaten by the guards to portray that the diggers are hungry and at the very bottom of the social order, and to illustrate the level of violence they live with. Then we proceed to the arena and instead of having a Roman Thunderdome fire lizard in there, which makes no sense, we see two inmates fighting, and our character complains that he has nothing to bet when Scatty asks him. Then as he leans in and looks towards the fight, we see two diggers grab him by the shoulders as the screen fades out and we hear Bloodwind sends his regards. This way we have a payoff for the setup at the beginning of the trailer, we illustrate the dangers of living in the old camp, and paint a great picture of Bloodwind's character. Ok, small community update here, a lot of you are understandably asking about the gothic playable teaser video and don't worry, it's still coming. Real life gets in the way a lot these days, but rest assured it'll be out sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching. I'm Audio Man, and I'll hear you next time.